So it seems everyone is talking about the dangers of microplastics and nanoplastics. So in today's video, what I'll do is share specific compounds that can actually help to detoxify microplastics. And specifically, what I wanna focus on are specific probiotics. But before we get into today's video, let's first of all understand a little bit more about microplastics and BPA. So microplastics are small plastic particles, less than five millimeters in size that come from the breakdown of larger plastics or intentionally manufactured like microbeads. Now these particles are widespread in the environment and can be ingested by both wildlife and humans. Microplastics consist of various different types of plastic and can also contain chemicals such as the very well-known BPA and forever chemicals such as PFAs. Now a common misconception is that BPA is the same as microplastics. However, BPA is a chemical found in certain plastics. While it can be part of microplastics, it can also leach out of plastics before they even break down into the microplastic form. So BPA can migrate from plastics into the environment during use, posing health risks long before plastics degrade into smaller particles. Now this video will look at potential mechanisms by which how probiotics can help to detoxify BPA and microplastics from the human body. Here we can have a look at the dangers of microplastics. Microplastics like BPA, which is mostly present in water bottles, interferes with our hormonal system affecting fertility and development. These may also lead to the dysfunction of the liver, cause metabolic disorder and oxidative stress. Microplastics like DHP, mostly used to make plastics flexible, may cause various cancers. Microplastics, mostly phthalates, may cause heart disease and may develop type 2 diabetes and obesity in humans. Microplastics in the gastrointestinal tract could interact with gut microbiota, potentially disrupting microbial communities and affecting overall gut health and immune function. These may potentially cause adverse effects on organ systems and physiological functions after entering our bloodstream and tissues through ingestion. Moving on to human exposure, 93% of people have BPA in their urine. That is staggering. These pollutants disrupt hormone regulation, gut health, and immune function. Now, scientists are now exploring how probiotics might help to detoxify the body either by binding to these toxins and mitigating their damage or neutralizing them before absorption. Probiotics can actually bind to BPA and microplastics in the gut. Now the mechanism, certain probiotic strains act as biological sponges, binding to BPA and microplastics in the gut and prevent them from being absorbed into the bloodstream. Instead, these contaminants are trapped and excreted through feces, reducing their potential harm. Now the key probiotic strains and their food sources, Lactobacillus casei, which is found in fermented dairy, kefir, yogurt, and aged cheese, bifidobacterium brevi, which is found in yogurt, fermented milk, breast milk, lactobacillus plantarum, found in kimchi, sauerkraut, pickles, and also sourdough bread. So that's pretty awesome. These are common foods that I actually consume myself on a regular basis. So let's have a look at probiotics at, that actually bind BPA and microplastics in the gut. A study on rats demonstrated that probiotic supplementation can trap and remove BPA from the gut before it enters circulation. Researchers administered BPA alongside probiotic strains Lactobacillus casei and Bifidobacterium brevi. Results showed that BPA levels in the blood were significantly lower in the probiotic group, while BPA levels in feces were higher, indicating successful elimination. Moving on to study number two, microplastic binding and excretion in mice. In a study on mice, researchers examined whether probiotics could help remove polystyrene micro and nanoplastics. Mice were fed microplastics along with probiotic strains, Lacticocybacillus paracasi DT66 and Lactiplantibacillus plantarum DT88. The probiotic fed mice excreted 34% more microplastic particles in feces and retained 67% fewer microplastic particles in their gut tissues. Next up, we can see study number three. This is specifically looking at probiotics that bind to cadmium. Now, what we can see here is that this study investigated the protective effects of Lactobacillus plantarum CCFM8610 against acute cadmium toxicity in 90 mice, which were divided into the prevention and therapy groups. In the prevention groups, mice received a large dosage of CCFM8610 daily for seven days 
before being given a single oral dose of 1.8 mg cadmium chloride per mouse while in the therapy groups, the same probiotic dose was administered for two days after cadmium exposure. Compared to mice that received cadmium alone, those given CCFM 8610 had lower cadmium absorption in the intestines, reduced cadmium accumulation in the liver and kidneys, and decreased oxidative stress and tissue damage. The living probiotic provided the strongest protection, suggesting its potential as a more effective dietary intervention for cadmium toxicity than standard antioxidant treatments. Moving on to section two, specific probiotics that mitigate harm from BPA and microplastics. Even when BPA and microplastics enter the body, probiotics can help counteract their negative effects by reducing gut dysbiosis, inflammation, and oxidative stress. Certain strains restore gut microbiome balance and strengthen the gut barrier, reducing toxin-related damage. Here are some of the key probiotic strains and their food sources. Lactobacillus acidophilus, found in yogurt, kefir, miso, and tempeh. Next is Bifidobacterium lactis, which is found in fermented dairy like kefir and yogurt and probiotic supplements. Last is Lactobacillus rhamnosus, found in kefir, dairy-based probiotics, and some cheeses. Study number four, probiotics reduce oxidative stress in toxin-exposed workers. This randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial examined the effects of probiotic yogurt and a multi-species probiotic capsule on oxidative stress and inflammation in 35 petrochemical workers. Participants consumed 100 grams per day of probiotic yogurt, a probiotic capsule, or conventional yogurt for six weeks. The probiotic capsule significantly reduced oxidative stress and inflammation, while probiotic yogurt lowered inflammation but not oxidative stress. The capsule was the most effective treatment, outperforming probiotic yogurt and conventional yogurt. However, no group had beneficial effects on 8-dihydrogranin and inflammatory factors. However, the sample was very small, overly exposed to chemicals compared to the regular population, and were only used for six weeks. Study number five, looking at the gut microbiome restoration in BPA-exposed rats. This study explored the potential of next-generation probiotics, NGPs, in mitigating inflammatory bowel disease exacerbated by BPA exposure. Two BPA-tolerant bacterial strains, Bacillus sp, AM1 and Pinoclostridium sp, demonstrated anti-inflammatory effects by reducing IL-8 secretion in vitro and lowering colon damage, MCP1, LCN2, Illinois CRUT 1B, and IL-6 levels in mice with colitis with Pinoclostridium spe showing the strongest effect, suggesting a potential therapeutic strategy for IBD linked to environmental toxins. Now, these are next-generation probiotics, so are not found in food. However, they are being designed as a probiotic. Study number six, probiotics protect against endocrine disruption. BPA is a known endocrine disruptor, affecting hormones related to fertility and metabolism. A study using zebrafish exposed to BPA for 28 days found that a multi-strain probiotic protected against BPA-induced reproductive toxicity. While this probiotic is a concentrated supplement, many of the strains are available in fermented dairy like yogurt, kefir, cheese, and some fermented plant-based foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, and miso. The probiotic group maintained near-normal hormonal gene expression and spermatogenesis, counteracting BPA's disruptive effects. Section three, probiotics that neutralize BPA in food and packaging. Beyond detoxifying the body, probiotics can neutralize BPA before it's even consumed. Some strains can break down BPA in plastic containers, packaged food, and beverages. So the key probiotics strains and their food sources, Lactobacillus plantarum, Lactobacillus ruderi, and Bacillus subtilis. Study number seven, looking at probiotics that can degrade BPA in yogurt. A food model study tested whether probiotics could reduce BPA in dairy products. Lactobacillus plantarum was added to BPA-contaminated yogurt, and within four weeks, BPA levels dropped by 95%, while Lactobacillus acidophilus reduced BPA by 90%. Study number eight, looking at probiotics that remove BPA from canned beverages. This study evaluated the ability of six probiotic strains, Limosolactobacillus rutri, Lactobacillus helveticus, Levolactobacillus brevis, Lactobacillus delbruecki, Lacticacibacillus casse, and Bacillus subtilis to degrade bisphenol A BPA in food packaging and beverages. 
Among them, L. Reutery showed the highest degradation efficiency, breaking down 69.83% of BPA in food packaging. When tested in canned beverages like black tea, orange juice, and cold mung bean tea, L. Reutery reduced BPA by over 92% within 24 hours and eliminated it entirely after 27 days. These findings suggest that l rutri may be an effective probiotic for reducing BPA contamination in food and beverages. Now, just as a reminder, there are other ways to also remove microplastics from the human body. So here we can see a range of different strategies. Regular exercise and sweating. Engage in regular physical activity to support circulation and sweating, which can help eliminate toxins from the body. Support liver health. The liver is the body's primary detoxification organ. Support liver health by eating a balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, and staying hydrated with plenty of water. Supplements, potentially activated charcoal, chlorella, spirulina, niacinamide, probiotics, and antioxidants to reduce oxidative stress. Avoid single-use plastics. Minimize the use of single-use plastics such as plastic bags, bottles, and packaging. Opt for reusable alternatives made from glass, stainless steel, or other materials. Check the ingredients of personal care and cosmetic products to ensure they do not contain microbeads. Look for products labeled as microbead free. Now here are other ways to detox microplastics from the body. One is to reduce shellfish consumption. Microplastics that end up in the ocean are ingested by bottom feeding shellfish. When you consume the shellfish, the microplastics are then ingested by you. Reducing or avoiding your consumption of shellfish can help cut down on the amount of microplastics that get into your system. Choose natural fibers. When purchasing clothing and textiles, choose natural fibers like cotton, wool, hemp, or bamboo, instead of synthetic materials like polyester, nylon, and acrylic, which shed microfibers during washing. Filter drinking water. Use a high quality water filtration system to remove microplastics from drinking water. Some filtration systems are specifically designed to remove microplastics and other contaminants. Fiber consumption eating more fiber has been shown to increase the excretion of microplastics. Don't microwave your food in plastic. Plastic and microwaves don't mix. Plastic containers leach plastics when they're heated. This holds true even when plastic containers are labeled microwave safe. As a reminder, please do remember to buy plastic free cosmetics. Microbeads can show up in a variety of cosmetic and household products. Make sure you read the label carefully. Looking for words that indicate the use of microbeads, such as polyethylene, abbreviated PE, polypropylene, abbreviated PP, and these different forms as well. So just another reason to protect and enhance the gut microbiome. This is the final takeaway from today's video, and it's essential to have a balanced diet with probiotic rich foods. Clearly, we can see new research coming out now on how the gut microbiome is incredibly important for overall health. And clearly we can see there are specific strains that can help to degrade these microplastics from the human body. So if you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please like the video and leave a comment down below to support the algorithm. Thank, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.